Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. This is just going to be a quick little experiment looking at how light intensity affects mycelium growth and mycelium colonization. So I had another project going. I ended up with some leftover pasteurized fuel pellets and some grain spawn. It's actually king oyster grain spawn. And I had this bead storage box and I figured I could turn this into like a little mycelium obstacle course to test this out. So I have a center chamber. That's where I'm going to put the spawn. The rest of those quadrants are going to be filled with pasteurized fuel pellets. What I did is I took the Dremel with a conical grinder point and I ground little holes in the walls of all those quadrants. So the mycelium could pass through but it would challenge it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill that center compartment with grain spawn, pasteurized fuel pellets and the rest of the quadrants. And then I'm going to shade half of this container with just a couple layers of black construction paper. I don't want to use any heavy material because I don't want to insulate it and affect the temperature. I just want to shade half of it out a little bit. And then I'm going to put it right on my fruiting table under some 12 on, 12 off, 6500K grow lights that I typically use for fruiting and just see how the mycelium grows. So I figured this would be a fun little experiment. You know, 20, 30 years ago, everything was you have to incubate in total darkness for best results. And then over the years, that's kind of changed and it's been probably don't need total darkness but some shade is good you don't want any direct light and I just wanted to test that out I want to see what direct light versus mostly shaded looks like in a side-by-side -side comparison so this king oyster spawn was a willing participant I got some nice bright white linear mycelial growth here to illustrate our results so sit back and relax and hope you guys enjoy we are at five days post inoculation here and you can see that thick white linear king oyster mycelium is already starting to escape that inner spawn chamber and crawl across the surface which is really cool i'm sure that mycelium is also growing through those holes and growing into those other quadrants subsurface but it's cool that it's crawling across the top and it's really easy to see so i think it's going to work well for this experiment already we have some really interesting developments here it looks like our shaded side over here is taking off more quickly already even after five days than our side that's been under the grow lights at 12 on 12 off so already we're seeing evidence that there is good reason to at least give your incubating jars or substrate containers some shade don't have them directly under the grow lights so i love how thick this oyster mycelium is and how it's crawling across the surface I really think this is going to be a neat experiment. So hopefully the contams stay away for a little while and we can watch this grow. We are at 15 days post inoculation. So let's take a look. All right, so we have the dark side over here on my left hand. Side that's been exposed to grow lights 12 on 12 off at the 6500k blue spectrum over here in my right hand. So, the one thing we haven't done yet is flipped it over. So, let's take a look. All right, so this is the bottom. Seems to pretty much match what's going on on top, although it does look a little more even. So, the other interesting thing is. We are 15 days post inoculation and at this point I'm basically trying to contaminate this thing. I'm just carrying this around my house in open air and we still have no contamination on this uncolonized pasteurized hardwood fuel pellet substrate. So that just illustrates the resilience of this substrate. That's why I recommend it for beginners. If you just go straight pasteurized fuel pellets with no additional supplements and just spawn it really heavy you can grow some beautiful mushrooms and this is super user friendly on the dark side there's a little bit of nodding on some of the grain kernels like it's almost thinking about trying to pin which is kind of interesting i don't see that don't see that on the side that's been exposed to light i only see it on the dark side which that's pretty interesting all right guys here we go this is going to be the final installment of this video so we did finally get some contamination it took 18 days to get contamination on our uncolonized pasteurized hardwood fuel pellets so that was really interesting to see 
get a good idea what our colonization window is. And again, that was with no protection. I was just carrying this thing around in open air, basically just protecting it from drying out, but inviting contamination. And it still took 18 days. All right, so I got you zoomed in, take a closer look. It's kind of hard to see. I think the camera is picking it up a little bit, but we do have some light mold contamination right in this sector right here. So the way you can tell, even if you can't see the contamination with your naked eye, is to look at your mycelium. So this mycelium was expanding wispily across the surface of our fuel pellets here, and then it encountered this contamination zone. And what it's doing is it's setting a hard edge right here where that contamination is. So to the mycelium, it's saying, okay, I've already captured all this substrate back here. Now I'm encountering a competitor. So I'm going to isolate it. I'm going to seal it off. So whether it be bacteria, mold, if you see your mycelium setting a hard edge like that, that is a definite indicator of contamination. It's also important to note that I was only looking at what I'm using for fruiting lights, which are 6,500 K LEDs. Most people are using light high in the blue spectrum as fruiting lights. So we were specifically looking at pretty high volume of light in that wavelength. There is some research I've read recently that says low levels of light in different spectrums can actually stimulate mycelium growth of certain species. So takeaways are give your incubating blocks, jars, bags, whatever they may be, give them a little protection from direct light, whether it be your fruiting lights, outside light, I am incubating my bags in a dark corner of the room with the window blocked out. Typically my jars, containers are in storage totes with a bath towel over them. You don't need total darkness, but definitely give them some protection from direct light. And as we've illustrated here, that is going to speed up your colonization, speed up your mycelium growth. And that is what we want because the faster we colonize, the less chance of contamination we have. So another takeaway here that I wanted to mention is you don't want to move your blocks of fruiting conditions too early. It's really common with, especially with new cultivators, I was the same way. You get antsy, you're staring at your blocks every day looking for pins, get antsy and you move them to fruiting conditions too early. So that can actually hurt your colonization, that can hurt your mycelium growth as we've illustrated here. So keep that in mind, be a little patient. Wait till they're definitely ready before you move them to fruiting because light can be a pinning trigger, but it can also slow down your mycelium growth. All right, so hit me up in comments, guys. Let me know what you think of this video. Let me know if you have any ideas for future videos. I know I have some ideas of other experiments we can do with this container, but I would love to hear what you guys think as well. I always love to have those discussions with you guys, so hit me up there, and I will catch you next video.